So grateful to each and every one of you. I'm always quite struck by that part in John's Gospel, or two parts in John's Gospel, one of which right at the beginning, one of which right at the end. The one right at the beginning, of course, is that wonderful moment of the party, the wedding banquet, where Jesus turns the water into wine. And it's a moment of transformation in that party. And what I love about that extraordinary image that John paints for us is that everything required for that miracle was already in the room. The stone water jars were already there. All it took was for Jesus, to, for Mary to say to the stewards, do whatever he tells you. And there's a bit of me deep down that I look at this toolkit. It's very contextual, that wonderful image of John's Gospel. And in that context, it's all there. And I do think, and certainly from what I've heard from people this afternoon, there's something about the treasures which we have already around us, to use the wonderful expression of St. Lawrence the Deacon, the treasures who are already around us. So treasure that which is already around you, because actually, just by retweaking a little bit, in other words, Mary saying, do whatever he tells you, and listening that little bit deeper, who knows where it might lead? And actually, the Growing Good Toolkit is a way in which to help us just to say, OK, there are stone water jars over there. How might they be slightly repurposed for a slightly different reason? It means a slightly different posture. It means thinking about things slightly differently. And of course, collectively, there's that sense of the spirit who's clearly been working over in that corner and working his way across, is at work. <laughs> and Pentecost, there we go, it's all very clear for Pentecost. The other image from John's Gospel, which I'd just like you to go away with uh, from this meeting, is that extraordinary image of despite everything, of all of his mistakes, and despite all the sort of stuff which he did, that moment on the beach where Jesus says to Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me? Those three times. And the first response of Jesus to yes, Lord, you know I love you, is Jesus saying, feed my lambs. Now let's not forget that Peter is you and me. Peter is the church. And there's an extraordinary moment that when Jesus, in that absolute climax of, of, of John's gospel, in that conversation, you can almost imagine Peter feeling, this is my one-to-one -one with Jesus. He knows what I've been up to. I've been, been given the most enormous rollicking I've ever received in my life. And actually, Jesus simply asks, do you love me? And then the response is, feed my lambs. Lambs being important. Lambs being the most vulnerable. Lambs being the most marginalised, those who are on the outskirts, those who actually freeze quite often and bleat for their mothers when things get rough, when things get difficult. I think there is a deep sense of the Spirit asking you and I to feed my lambs. And this toolkit is helping us to understand what that looks like and what that means. And I'm saying that to people who I know understand that. Because I also believe that the same spirit that we're going to be celebrating on Sunday at Pentecost has brought each and every one of you here for this session this afternoon. Otherwise, why else would you be here? God has called you by name and made you his own. Words which I use on a regular basis in confirmation, uh, uh, confirmation services. So my prayer, which I will pray in a moment, is a recognition that in again in John's Gospel, Jesus breathes on them and says, peace be with you. And we are called to be people who, of peace who are there to go and feed those lambs in order that God may be glorified and people will come to a greater understanding of what it means to be made beautiful, wonderful in God's image. Friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to the whisperings of the Spirit who has drawn you to this place. And may God bless your ministries as a result of this encounter in abundance. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this enormous privilege of gathering together in this place. 
We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of this church. We thank you, too, for the ministries offered right across this capital. Lord, where anything has come from you in the course of these sessions, may that grow deeper in our hearts. Lord, if anything has come from our own sense of vanity, we pray for forgiveness. And Lord, by the fresh outpouring of your spirit, as you breathe upon us, help us, Lord, to build your kingdom to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.